workplace safety is a concern for all employers. Let's take a look at the Occupational Safety and Health Act, known as OSHA. To help protect employees, the Occupational Safety and Health Act, the OSHA Act of 1970, requires employers to pursue workplace safety policy. Workplace safety deals with the physical protection of people from injury or illness while on the job. Employers must meet all Occupational Safety and Health Administration OSHA safety standards, maintain records of injuries and deaths due to workplace accidents, and submit to on-site inspections when notified. Those who don't comply are subject to citations and penalties, usually in the forms of fines. Willful violations of the Act that cause death are punishable with a fine of up to $500,000 for the organization and $250,000 and up to six months in prison for an individual who is found culpable. Today, the HR department commonly has the responsibility for ensuring the health and safety of its employees. In addition to many specific requirements in the Act, the General Duties Clause of the OSHA Act covers all employers. The General Duties Clause also states that each employee has the duty to comply with the occupational safety standards, rules, and regulations that are set forth by the employer as well as the Act. In 1970, the year the OSHA Act was passed, job-related accidents accounted for more than 14,000 worker deaths in the United States. OSHA has the broad authority to investigate complaints and impose citations and penalties on employers who violate the Act. OSHA is responsible for setting federal safety and health standards and promulgating those standards with employers. OSHA is also responsible for all employer inspections. Inspections are made without any advance notice to the employer and are done based on the following issues in priority order, starting with imminent danger, followed by catastrophes like fatalities or hospitalizations, worker complaints and referrals, targeted inspections in high injury rate industries, and follow-up inspections. The employer can decide not to allow an inspection without an inspection warrant, a court order establishing OSHA probable cause for inspection, but this is generally not a very good idea on a number of levels, as you might imagine. In general, it makes more sense to allow the inspection to go on in accordance with OSHA rules. The employer has the right to get the inspector's credentials, including their name badge and badge number, and to receive information on the reason for the inspection, either the employee complaint or the program inspection information. Assuming that an inspection is allowed, we need to be aware of some things that we have the right to and that we should do during the inspection. If the inspection is being conducted due to a worker complaint, we have the right to get a copy of the complaint without the employee's name, and we want to do so because we want to know what's being alleged. And secondly, we have the right to have a company representative accompany inspectors as they go through their site visit, and we, as well as an HR representative, want to accompany them. Employees' rights during inspections include the right to refuse to be interviewed, or if an employee agrees to an interview, they can request that the employer representative be present or that the interview be held in private. OSHA requires that all employers maintain information at each work site that describes any chemical hazards that may be present on site. Safety data sheets, known as SDSs, are documents that provide information on a hazardous chemical and its characteristics. Common OSHA violations are as follows. Willful, serious, other than serious, de minimis, failure to abate, and repeated. Willful and or repeated violations can bring the employer up to a $126,749 fine for each violation. NIOSH works under the umbrella of the Centers for D Disease Control and Prevention known as the CDC. NIOSH was created as a part of the 1970 OSH Act and its mission is global in scope. NIOSH is the federal agency that conducts research and makes recommendations to prevent worker injury and illness. 
NIOSH notes three major goals in its strategic plan to conduct research, to promote safe and healthy workplaces, and enhance international workplace safety and health through global collaborations. The organization identifies workplace issues that can cause injury or illness and create standards for those issues. They also work hand in hand with OSHA to identify workplace illness and attract diseases that can be passed from one person to another in the work environment. The most significant areas of research includes communicable disease research in workplace settings. An EAP is a set of counseling and other services provided to employees that help them resolve personal issues that may affect their work. About three quarters of private sector workers, 77%, have access to an EAP. An EAP is designed to assist employees in confronting and overcoming problems in their personal life, such as marital problems or divorce, financial problems, substance addictions, emotional problems, and many other issues. EAPs are confidential services provided to the employee. The employee can contact the EAP and receive counseling and or treatment for emotional or other personal issues as necessary. Wellness programs offer health education, training and fitness, weight and lifestyle management, and health risk assessment services to employees. Employee wellness programs, known as EWPs, work to help our employees become more healthy and fit and to lower the incidence of types of health problems that cost employees and employers significant amounts of time, money, and energy every year. Congress is reviewing options to allow EWPs to continue to provide incentives for employee wellness, well-being, and compliance with the Genetic Information Non-Discrimination Act. Our managers will want to stay appraised of changes in regulations concerning these EWPs. Ergonomics is the science of fitting workplace conditions and job demands to the capabilities of the working population. The CDC identifies the goal of ergonomics as being to reduce stress and eliminate injuries and disorders associated with the overuse of muscles, bad posture, and repeated tasks. Workplace ergonomics focuses on the design of jobs and workspaces to limit the repetitive stresses that employees face during their daily work. The OSHA website notes that under the OSHA Act's General Duty Clause, employers must keep their workplaces free from recognized serious hazards, including ergonomic hazards. In addition to the potential for enforcement actions on the part of OSHA, it makes sense to pay attention to ergonomics. Musculoskeletal disorders include a commonly known repetitive stress injury known as RSIs called carpal tunnel syndrome in which nerves in the wrist become inflamed and painful, making movement difficult. All of these problems have the potential to cost an organization money in the form of lost productivity as well as workers' compensation claims. Stress is the body's reaction to environmental demands. This reaction can be emotional and or physical and can be caused by a lack of work-life balance. According to Forbes, 35% of Americans have thought about leaving a job because of stress at work and 42% have actually done so. Absenteeism is costly and there's a relationship between absenteeism and workplace stress. Stress levels are on a continuum from low to high, but stress is an individual perception matter. Some people are better at handling stress than others. Stress is functional when it helps improve performance by challenging and motivating people to meet objectives. On the other hand, too much stress is dysfunctional because it decreases performance. Burnout is a constant lack of interest and motivation to perform one's job. Burnout results from too much stress. Stress that is severe enough to lead to burnout is dysfunctional stress. There are five common contributors to job stress. Personality type, organizational culture and change, management behavior, type of work, and interpersonal relations. Management is the process of reducing stress and making it functional. Workplace security is the management of personnel, equipment, and facilities in order to protect them. 
workplace security is concerned with mitigating risks to the organization and to its members. Cybersecurity is the use of tools and processes to protect organizational computer systems and networks. Human resource management is especially concerned with outsiders penetrating company computer systems that have sensitive employee information on them, such as information on medical records, payroll and banking data, and other personnel data. HR managers must work with the company's security managers to put up strong roadblocks to outsiders who seek to enter systems with this type of data. Human resource professionals must work with company computer security managers to make it as hard as possible to get access if a person is a non-authorized user. There were 417 workplace homicides in 2015, and workplace shootings rose by 15% that year. Well, this is serious, we need to take precautions to respond if such incidents happen. And we should understand that workplace homicides are still extremely rare and that we should not panic over these scary statistics. There's been an increase in violence between outsiders and employees, such as customers shooting employees and other customers. This is a trend that we need to be aware of as HR managers and safety management personnel. The key to preventing workplace violence is to recognize and handle suspicious behavior before it turns violent. That's what the course is all about. In business, we have desk rage, which can take the form of yelling, verbal abuse, and physical violence. Frustration, stress, and fear also bring out this type of anger. In fact, violence is almost always prompted by unresolved conflict, and the violence also takes form of sabotage against other employees, backstabbing, spreading false rumors, or the organization, like damage to property, to get even. The physical work environment, such as space, like work noise and odors, as well as temperature, ventilation, and color, contributes to making people angry. Anger can lead to perception problems and poor decisions, as well as hostility, which are stressful and can harm health. Letting anger build up often leads initially to passively not doing or saying something, but then later blowing up at another person. Here are some tips for effectively getting rid of anger. Use objective, rational thinking, look for positives, look for humor, develop a positive attitude, and use an anger journal. Self-awareness is also a significant issue. Here are some self-awareness questions. How often do you get irritated or angry each day? What makes you irritated or angry? How upset do you get? What feelings do you have when you are angry? And are you good at dealing with your irritations? The following are some tips from the Crisis Prevention Institute and the National Institute for Occupational Safety and Health to help us deal with anger and others through our emotional control, which prevents violence. Bullying behaviors have been found four times more common than sexual harassment, but there are still no laws at the national level in the United States that deal directly with bullying as an offense. Organizations need to address an issue in company handbooks and provide training on processes that should be used if someone suspects bullying behavior or if themselves are a victim of such behavior. The number one preventative method is to train all employees to deal with anger and prevent violence, which is what we're learning in this course. There are five simple steps to keep in mind when it comes to preventing violent behavior in the workplace. Develop a policy. Train all employees, develop mechanisms for reporting violent behaviors, investigate all reported incidents, and take prompt, fair, disciplinary action. One thing we all need to realize is that the police department will not help prevent personal or workplace violence. It's up to us, as human resource professionals and organizations, to deal with workplace violence as proactively as possible.